So Imperian Take Flight arrived in Warframe with update 27 and it is a massive shift in a different direction, right? Almost feels like a different game in parts. So there is a lot for us to learn and a lot to take on board if you want to navigate and upgrade your personal railjack. Welcome on in you beautiful feckers, how you all doing? So this video is hopefully <laughs> a complete guide to everything railjack. Now I am assuming you've already built your railjack, but if you haven't, don't worry because you can still jump into public or friends railjack missions or if you haven't built one then I have a link in the description of this video that will hopefully help you build your own. Now I'm going to try to keep this video as short and sweet and detailed as possible but there is a lot for us to get through so I apologize if this is a long ass video but take flight is just the start. The beginning of the new war and the eventual battle with the sentience and of course Lotus or whatever she has became now and they will be expanding on it further. Liches, solo crew options next year and so on. So I will share my thoughts or try to at the end of this video if it's not too long. Also I'll try to remember to timestamp each segment. So let's get started on all of the details. Now first up is our ship's component and of course the layout of it. Your base railjack components are pretty weak, not gonna lie. Low health, low shields, very slow speed while your guns feel like they shoot feathers. Lower than Mark 1. Imagine if the Mark 1 Bratton was basically an upgrade to your weapons. You need to upgrade your railjack's weapons to increase that damage output. You need to upgrade your reactor for increased avionic capacity. You need to upgrade your engines for speed and maneuverability as well as shield array for more shields. And to do this, your clan can research upgraded versions of all of these items. The research for this is clan-wide, like other clan research items. Everyone can chip in to research Mark 1 components, Mark 2, and I'm assuming eventually Mark 3 as well. Then you can replicate that blueprint and craft the item for your railjack. Now, when looking at the armaments tab, the top gun is the pilot one or the nose turret, the middle one is your side turrets and the bottom one is your missiles or your armament of choice. These clan ship parts that you research will be useful when you first start off if the research is already complete, give you a nice boost to survivability and damage but simply running missions with the base railjack will eventually have you dropping better components and they drop a lot. I've done about 20 hours of Railjack missions and this is the amount of upgraded items that have dropped for me in missions for me to repair and craft and of course eventually install on my Railjack all the way up to Mark 3 items. Huge upgrades and totally change the quality of what my Railjack can do, especially once I level up the intrinsics as well. Which brings us to the next part, these wreckage components. These are the personal ship parts that can be found in Railjack jack missions by killing enemy ships looting etc yes loot is shared so whatever you pick up other players get as well these wreckages of course have rng stats which is something a lot of players aren't too happy about if i pick something up then everyone will get it but my stats might be slightly different to yours for that component like if i get a wrecked engine it might have a slightly faster speed than yours or if i get a wrecked reactor it could have a higher capacity than what you can get and you can only hold 30 wreckages at any given time so you will need to scrap any of these wreckages that you don't want or you won't be able to pick up new ones that drop throughout a mission until you do. You can choose to scrap these items on the armaments tab of your ship menu back in your dry dock and scrapping them will give you the new railjack endo called Dirac which is needed for leveling your avionics. Now if you have repaired one of these wrecked items and then choose to scrap it after repairing it you will get the resources back so it's okay. Now these wreckages need to be repaired back in your dry Rydock, like I said, and they are not clan wide. Whatever you pick up is just for you, and only you can repair it. Each wreckage comes from a different house or a different designer, and there are three different houses Vidar, Lavin, and Zetki. And each one of these houses seem to have their own signature design type. Lavan seems to be the budget parts for your railjack, you know, kind of budget airline Ryanair might blow up on you, you don't know. Vidar seems to be the evenly balanced out parts, and Zetki or Zekti are the high-end railjack components but need min-maxing on heat consumption or energy consumption in order to run them efficiently. Now some of my Zekti parts, my guns, overheat after four rounds so I need to upgrade my avionics if I want to run them or if I want to use them and stop that heat increasing and making my guns absolutely useless. So ship min-maxing will definitely be a thing which brings us to the next part, the ship's avionics. Avionics are basically the ship's mods and the grid is where you place them. 
Same as Warframes, just different names. You also have an avionic capacity, same as Warframes. Each mod has a cost which takes up some of that capacity. Installing or upgrading to a new ship reactor will most definitely increase your mod capacity or your avionics capacity, whether from a wrecked part or from a clan research part. Now, avionics and the grid are a little bit more complicated. The grid is where you place all of those different avionic mods and each grid slot itself can be leveled up to three times using the new endo called Dirac. A higher leveled grid slot means that it can hold a higher leveled avionic mod. And at the same time as being able to level up the grid slots, you can also level up the avionic mods using Dirac as well. And when you level these mods up, of course, you will also increase their stats, like spending endo on any normal mod. Level them up for more health, more speed, more turret cooldown, more turret damage, turret crit damage, more armor on your railjack, you get the idea. It's basically just a different type of modding system, or the same modding system just with different fucking names. Now on the avionics screen you have three different types of avionics. The integrated ones on the right are the ship's passives, basically health, armor, speed, all that sort of stuff. Tactical avionics on the bottom right are abilities that you can use on a cooldown, like the stealth one that we've seen on a previous stealth stream, or freezing enemies that board your ship for a duration, or reducing the cooldown on the forge at the back of your ship. Basically just tactical abilities. And the battle avionics on the bottom left of your screen are the railjack ship's abilities. Basically like Warframe abilities but for your railjack. But I haven't found any of these yet in the 20 plus hours that I've played so far. Not one single battle avionics, so I'm having really bad luck. So leveling the grid up of your avionics will basically allow you to equip some of those higher level avionic mods and if you increase the level of the avionic mods, it will increase the stats on those mods as well. Hopefully that's easy enough to understand. Now next up is the intrinsics. This is the new skill point progression system for your account. You gain intrinsic points based off of the affinity earned throughout a Railjack mission. So an affinity booster will increase your intrinsics earned. The intrinsics panel is where you choose what role you personally want to play in a Railjack mission tactical, piloting, gunnery or engineering and eventually the solo intrinsic called command which will be added in 2020. Each one of these intrinsics will take about 1020 points in total to max out and each rank of these intrinsics will cost double the previous rank. So pick which one you want to go for or you could go for an even balance, entirely up to you. The tactical intrinsics are basically just that, tactical passive abilities that you gain when you're on a railjack, like being able to teleport anywhere on your own ship or beam back onto your ship from an enemy cruise ship or while you're out in space on your arcwing simply by bringing up the omni tool or reducing the flux energy cost of things on your railjack, reducing the arcwing blink cooldown as well. The pilot intrinsic when leveled up will give you a speed boost for your railjack, faster moving and dodging. The slipstream boost is incredibly good, faster arcwing speed and eventually a ramming speed at the level 10 as well, which is what I'm totally aiming for. The gunnery intrinsic is all about them guns. This will allow full 360 degree viewing on your side turrets, which makes your ship invisible and gives those side guns the ability to shoot in all directions. Gunnery gives you the slingshot ability as well, which allows you to shoot your Warframe from your railjack onto an enemy ship and board it by slamming through the sides of it. Reduction to your guns overheating and eventually an aim snapping for turrets at level 10. So aim assist kind of of sorts for your guns. Now the engineering intrinsic is all about forging items like missiles, forward cannon ammunition, omni tool for putting out fires and hazards, increasing the health, armor and shield of your arcwing. You can get more resources when you refine at the forge as well and at rank 10 you can put out ship hazards like fires and close breaches from the onboard tactical menu. Now this tactical menu is very very useful and eventually it's used for giving orders or for warping around your own ship to put out fires and things like that. It will also allow you to cast certain warframe abilities via the map to help teammates out as well as giving orders to crew members. The piloting intrinsic needs level 1 for a speed boost for your railjack. The gunnery intrinsic needs rank 1 to give you that lead X kind of symbol in front of enemy ships to help you with aiming kind of lead your shots and the rank one engineer speeds up repairs on the ship. So there are some intrinsics that I feel are kind of must-haves to start off with 
just to make missions run faster and easier and I guess with less mayhem but I'll go over those in my next video. Now next up let's talk about the resource forge located at the back of your railjack all the way at the bottom. There are four forges in total. This is where you will craft items during a mission to help you put out fires, close breaches, craft munitions, basically help you and the ship stay alive. Now you can craft these items before a mission starts by stocking up on them back in your dry dock via the terminal just to be on the safe side and it is kind of recommended but during a mission in order to craft them if you do run out you need to pick up the resources required first copper nicks, cubic diodes, carbides and of course pustrels as well. Now if you run out of omni tool charges you will need to craft more revelite so that's why you need resources to be left in the forge at any given time. There is however a refine button at the top of the forge menu. This will refine all gathered resources and basically remove them from your railjack and bank them into you and your squad's inventory making them unusable throughout the mission meaning you can't craft more revelite meaning your ship could fucking blow up so you should have some of these items like i said in the forge at any given time even if it hits capacity amount i still think that you can still gather resources and you still get them into your inventory so please 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 if you're in a public mission don't push refine unless the mission is almost over because it is happening in public matches a lot people hit refine almost five minutes into the mission and remove everything from the ship which means the ship ends up blowing up or you can't close those breaches because you've run out of resources. So only refine when you need to but refining can give increased resource gains as well and any resources not used according to DE will be added back into your end of mission rewards. Which leads us to the next part, Railjack missions. What types are there and what can you look forward to doing? Railjack currently has three different zones for running missions with multiple missions in each zone. The Earth Proxima zone is more or less the starting area and it can drop Mark 1 components and has pretty straightforward missions, basically just kill everything. Saturn Proxima, which you need to have I think a rank 3 intrinsic for, drops Mark 2 components and has some variation to mission types as well. And the end zone is called Vale Proxima which needs a rank 7 intrinsic in order to run its missions. This drops Mark 3 ship components and has more of a variation on mission types. Yes, there is kill everything missions, but there's also ones where you have to board enemy galleon ships and basically kill the captain inside the boss, which hopefully drops one of those two new weapons. Like I said at the start of this video, this is just the start for Railjack Take Flight. Expect a lot more to be added over the coming months, years, whatever, and expect it to grow with the impending new war again. The sentience. Now, last but not least, is the rewards from Railjack because rewards matter, right? Umbral Forma is a reward for running Railjack missions. So, that alone is reason enough for a lot of people to run these missions to try and get Umbral Forma in order to boost the Warframes up as much as possible. Of course, there is also all of the new resources which you need in order to craft new parts for Railjacks. And like I said, so far, there's also those two new weapons, the Pennant and the Quellor rifle, which are in Railjack missions for boarding enemy galleons and I think killing the captains. Wrecked Railjack components can also be picked up. That's another reward and lots of them. Former blueprints can be awarded, the normal former blueprints. Kuva, the new endo called Dirac. Avionics for your ship can also be found. Riven slivers, 10 of these will give a full riven when handed in. I believe there's Captura scenes as well and possibly some rewards that we haven't found yet. But that's basically the Railjack guide. Hopefully this will help some of you out. Feel free to share it around if it has and it might help other people out as well. I was going to share my opinions on Railjack but the video is too long as it is right now. So I'll give you a quick recap. I like some aspects of Railjack. I dislike other aspects. The grind is pretty damn high. The repair costs are kind of crazy for some of those wreckages. Railjack's damage to begin with is nothing compared to Arcwing's weapons. It feels slow and boring, but once you upgrade your avionics and of course the pilot intrinsics, it becomes much more agile and much, much faster, and it's much more enjoyable because of this. But the guns definitely feel like they need some kind of a little boost, but I still need to maybe find the right Mark III gun for the front of my Railjack and for the side turrets as well. You can be successful doing solo Railjack, simply start a mission, hide your Railjack, jump into your Arcwing and fly around killing everything. So it is possible, 
And like I said at the start of this video, this is just the beginning. The war is coming. Do me a huge favor and hit that like button if you enjoyed the video or don't if you didn't. Subscribe for more Warframe and as always, thanks very much for watching.